Professor Faroya, please. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you very much for introduction. I'm the Takashi Furuya in the Shimani University in Japan. So I would like to talk about the consistency of the Bayesian method for inverse scattering program. So this is a joint work with uh, Pu Zhao Kao and uh, Jen Nan Wan. They are in the Taiwan. <clears throat> so first of all, the, I would like to explain the, what is inverse scattering problem. So first of all, the scattering, scattering problem, so you, you may already be familiar, but uh, let's consider some of the acoustic waves uh, scattered by some inhomogeneous reflective index. So we, 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 we denote it by n. And then the, we consider u, u is the total field, so which is given by some incident field and the scattered field. And then let's consider some following the Helmholtz equation, Laplacian u plus a kappa square n u is equal to zero. And for the uniqueness and the reportedness, so we assume that some uh, normal felt uh, radiation condition like this. <clears throat> And then here we assume that some reflective index is always non-negative, and the one minus n this this can be some compactly supported function on R n, and we also denote by this support is in D, and D, yes D is open and bounded smooth domain. So the inverse scattering problem is uh, okay. Let's uh, assume that uh, incident field as the uh, from, from mean that e power of i kappa x dot theta, theta in the incident angle. And then the scat, uh, scattered field, uh, U, USCA, uh, satisfy following the, uh, satisfy core following. So that this infinity uh, called it the uh, scattering, scattering field, I'm uh, sorry, uh, scattering amplitude or uh, far field pattern. So but the idea of the inverse scattering problem is uh, to determine the uh, reflective index n from the knowledge of the far field pattern infinity for any angle. And we here we assume we fix uh, kappa. So next, uh, we'd like to first explain the Bayesian uh, posterior mean of the, our inverse scattering problem. So, that's why we need to uh, we need the statistical setup. So we first we define G is the forward map, uh, G of n, and n is in, uh, the reflective index. So G is the mapping from uh, capital X to the five uh, five pattern. So what is X? X is the angle uh, angle of the incident and the scattered. <clears throat> so that means G of nx is uh, some real valued, uh, real valued part of the perfect pattern and the imaginary part of the perfect pattern. So this is in the R2. <clears throat> and then the, uh, now, I, I, uh, since we, I, I want to explain st 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 statistical setup. So xi is the iid, uh, uh, randomly uh, distributed from the dis distribution mu. Mu is the, our case, we assume that the uniform distribution on uh, surface. <clears throat> Excuse me, what is IID? What is the relation? I, IID. Uh, I, is... I, uh, I, IID means that uh, identical. Uh, uh, the, yes, this one, one uh, abbreviation, the uh, I, I, uh, independent identically distributed from mu. <clears throat> what does it mean? So that means that we sample something from, okay, so first we need to uh, many sample, I mean, uh, and, and a sample of XI, but uh, everyone should be independent. So that means the sampling uh, does not depend on previous one, roughly speaking. This is in independent. And the ident uh, independent identity distribution means that, but everything coming from the I same distribution mu. This is the often, Assume in the statistical statistical setup. <clears throat> so x i is just a part of x, right? Yes, yes, but randomly determined. Uh huh. Okay. 
So the, and then we consider some of the statist, uh, statistical model. So this is statistical model is uh, <clears throat> by I. It is given by some of the uh, range of the uh, forward map G of N of Xi plus some of the noisy part. This noisy uh, uh, Wi is also uh, coming from the uh, normal distributions. So this N, N is a normal distribution with the mean zero and the covariance is just identity. And the sigma is just a noisy level. <clears throat> so this, uh, this is a stati statistical the model, our case. So the, our setup is uh, we want to estimate the reflect index, index N by the uh, observation data. This observation data is the random variable, and we call the uh, correction of the y i and x i is the uh, y of the capital N and x capital X of the capital N. And uh, N is uh, sufficiently large. <clears throat> this is a statistical setup. So ne next, uh, uh, we define the set Ah, so space space of the reflective index. The reflective index n is uh, for simplicity we assume that n is between zero and the capital n uh, zero, and uh, so and n, n it's outside of d outside of d n is always one. So we assume that n boundary of n is always one, and also derivative <coughs> on the boundary d should be zero. But uh, for uh, in order to have the more freedom in the prior distribution, the, uh, we we do not directly sampling from this space. So we will use uh, some suitable uh, link function, and this is for the uh, connector between this uh, space F and the a priori, a priori function space. So next, we explain the uh, link function. So this uh, link function uh, is. Uh, roughly speaking, the, this is the bijective between this uh, minus infinity uh, infinity to the zero comma uh, and zero, and we need a suitable assumption. So we, we can uh, give some one uh, example like this. But anyway, so if we I if we we using the link function, uh, we can also have the uh, space of the re reflective index is given by n is equal to link function of uh, f. So f is just a, a subordinate space with regularity s. So that that means that uh, it is not not difficult to sampling from this space because there are many conditions. But the, our idea is possibly some appropriate uh, sampling appropriate appropriate some function space. This is just subordinate space. And then after the composition of the link function, and then we can uh, make some reflective index. <clears throat> so next, uh, it, uh, now we uh, defined it some link function. So we we defined the reparameterized uh, re forward map. So that means uh, so G is mapping from the reflective index to the observation. So we consider some of the composition of the G of the link function of F. So we call the mapping from the F to the observation function is the calligraphic G. <clears throat> and then the this uh, using this uh, reparameterized the forward map uh, calligraphic G that we consider the random uh, and just following the uh, st statistical model. So this we just replacing G by uh, calligraphic G. <clears throat> And then the, uh, uh, I, I want to, next I want to explain the, the posterior distribution for our statistical setup. So <clears throat> now we, uh, <clears throat> this uh, X, uh, Y, I, and X, I, 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 from the, yes, uh, sorry, we assume that some, yes, this is a random vector. So random vector has always some of the distribution. So th such a distribution, we call it the P I of F. <clears throat> and then the by the assumption of the, assumption means that by the form of the equation two, um, the, uh, it's turned out that uh, a lot of Nikov uh, derivative of the P, I mean, 
distribution of yn under xi is given by uh, following. So this is just uh, exponential minus some uh, like this. <clears throat> and this, uh, uh, the xi is a uh, surface measuring. And if, uh, if we use the uh, uh, Radon-Nikolaev uh, derivative of P, posterior, uh, posterior distribution uh, given by following. Uh, and, and pi, sorry, pi is the uh, 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 probability measure. Uh, we call it, uh, it the prior distribution. Uh, this is on the uh, support of space S, uh, HS. And this is, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot the mention uh, assumption of both. Sorry, I, I forgot the mention assumption of S. S is assumed to be a, 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 some some large enough in some sense. But it, in, in that case, the, the HS is supported on the continuous function space. And then the you know, posterior distribution uh, given by the following. Uh, the, this, roughly speaking, the Yes, the posterior uh, distribution is given by uh, <clears throat> integral with respect to prior and e power of the n uh, ln. ln is uh, a likelihood function. This likelihood function is uh, given by the following. Uh, I think uh, i y y minus the forward mark of the xi. <clears throat> So the okay, so I already defined the posterior mean in the, our case. So the next, uh, we are interested in the breaking uh, the property of the posterior mean, uh, sorry, posterior distribution when uh, n goes to infinity. <clears throat> and in, in in this case, that the uh, observation data y n and x n is generated by some two uh, parameter. This two parameter means the n and zero. And zero is given by some the ring function of the uh, f, f zero. This is true. And the question is, uh, can we have the consistency in theorem for the posterior mean? So this means that the posterior mean, I defined it the previous slide, and we will concentrate it at n zero. Uh, later, I will explain what is the meaning of the consistent theorem. But if uh, we desire that n, if n goes to infinity, the, for example, posterior mean uh, should be converged to the uh, n, n zero. This is the uh, what we uh, desire. Uh, sorry, and also the what is the concentrate uh, ratio? This ratio also interested in our case. So. This is uh, for assumption of the prior prior distribution. So let's uh, uh, first let denote that the pi after sorry first first let uh, let us denote that s is uh, bigger than uh, t plus uh, three over two and t should be uh, bigger than one and h is the uh, Hilbert space uh, embedding in the some subordinate space h s. And uh, pi, pi prime, uh, this is a centered to Gaussian uh, probability measure on the Banaha space C zero C. <clears throat> and we uh, we also assume that uh, uh, reproducing the Carnot Hilbert space uh, abbreviated R R K H S of R prime is equal to the H H is uh, some Hilbert space. So roughly speaking, the, we assume that the prior is Gaussian, a center to Gaussian in some sense. <clears throat> and then the, uh, so in order to show the, some consistency theorem, consistency I need to also assume that some, I need to do some the, like uh, scaling. The scaling means that let pi prime be the given in the previous assumption. And uh, let's consider some pi n Pi n is the row row of the fn. Fn is uh, given by, uh, roughly speaking, the fn is uh, essentially from the n prime. F prime is uh, coming from the pi prime. But uh, we need to scaling. Uh, we need to multiply one over n. 
of the three over four s plus a uh, ten. Uh, so, and and then such a yes, and and, and then uh, and then the pi n and um, define the essence prior by the previous assumption. And this uh, R R K H S uh, we denote it the H N. It's still the S S R K H N, and this norm is given by following. But anyway, so such a uh, uh, assumption, uh, we can sh uh, show the from the main result. This is the so uh, this is a uh, uh, post uh, this uh, uh, this distribution n and n is uh, a is, uh, uh, link function and f and f is a uh, uh, randomly generated from the this pi n <clears throat> and then the post uh, posterior distribution satisfy uh, following so this uh, how to look this theorem is uh, okay first the uh, gamma n gamma n is given by uh, following uh, ratio and uh, if, if n is goes to infinity this gamma n goes to uh, zero so, so that means of course uh, we consider this inequality so n minus n not n not n zero is uh, some the true distribution and this uh, norm is uh, uh, greater than this uh, gamma n yes, the probability uh, probability uh, that uh, this uh, gamma children of n. Uh, uh, sorry, so first I need to explain the this this uh, uh, all, all, all notation. This if if I rewrite that n is equal to the O p of the sequence a n, mean that's a following. So uh, very roughly speaking, the uh, the probability uh, that satisfies the pi tilde of n is uh, bigger than the exponential minus k n uh, delta n square. Uh, is uh, very uh, uh, small if n n goes to infinity. <clears throat> so that means, uh, very roughly speaking, the n is very uh, close to n0 in the sense of the posterior distribution. This is a, a consistent theorem. That means uh, the n, n uh, s meta n is concentrated on the n0. So the other, so it is little with other consequences the, we, from the cons, uh, <clears throat> from the previous uh, previous uh, uh, consistency consistency theorem, we can have the following the probability uh, convergence. That means the uh, <clears throat> link function of the f f f bar minus n in the in the sense of the norm l infinity is uh, greater than the uh, some constant times uh, gamma n. This the probability uh, goes to zero if n goes to infinity. So that means uh, okay, let's the uh, uh, gamma gamma bar is a posterior mean. So that means the po this posterior mean uh, it is very known that posterior mean can be approximated by the, for example, MCMC algorithm. So that means first we compute the posterior mean of f, and uh, after the we propagate the, this f f bar by the link function. So this this can be estimator, and this estimator is very Cross to the n zero if n goes to infinity. So this is the uh, uh, yeah one interpretation of the previous uh, consistency theorem. So we also I also want to comment the uh, ratio of gamma n. Gamma n uh, is how to say gamma n is uh, how to it it explain the convergence convergence of n goes to n zero. But a, a gamma n, if, if gamma n is uh, decreasing faster, it will be good. But our case is uh, how, how decrease the gamma n is the log of n. 
uh, minus power. So this is very slow. Why why this happen is uh, in the proof the I use some the classical result of the stability estimate of the inverse scattering problem. So this is uh, known uh, as a log time log type stability estimate. So this is also uh, well known as uh, uh, of optimal estimates. So that's so this log time estimates. Uh, sorry, since since uh, we we only have the log time estimate of the scattering problem on concentration ratio ratio also the log type. So this is this is an another uh, interesting work about the Bayesian Bayesian uh, method for inverse problem. For example, Calderon problem and the Schrodinger equation and the parabolic equation, and had been. Uh, discussed it previously. Our case is the inverse scattering problem, and the uh, log type uh, due to the log type stability, the concentrate ratio is not so good. And fi finally, I uh, would like to the, show some numerical experiment for Bayesian setup. So uh, here, the, we assume that the refractive index assumed to be the piecewise constant function. And uh, okay, let's let's denote by n is a one plus q. So q is support of q is in b. Sorry, I, I changed the notation. The previous slide I used d, but uh, I used some b. And b now since we assume that uh, piece like constant, so b is some uh, decomposed into some several pieces b i using b i. And for each bi uh, reflective index, in, in, index pq, q is a constant. So this constant q, uh, now, now the, the reflective index can be some complex variable. So the uh, first the real value of qi between the small l and the capital L, and the imaginary part of qi uh, between uh, m and the capital M. And I mean, we assume we assume that some lower bound and upper bound, and then the um, this assumption means that Q is given by sum of the QI. Q I is just a constant and the chi I. Chi I is the characteristic function on the B I. And then the uh, by this assumption, the reflective index Q is uh, equivalent uh, to the belonging to this Euclidean subset of the Euclidean space. Uh, you create a space R R D J. So sorry, J J is the num number number of the uh, this pieces for B bar. So uh, simply namely the theta is uh, one of the element of the this capital theta. So this is notation theta is equivalent to Q in our uh, assumption. Uh, and the, yeah, this is the yeah. Almost same the st statistical experiment. So we also assume that x i is the sampling from the uniform distribution on the uh, surface. And uh, yes, and so you, we use the same notation. And uh, yes, and let's consider the statistical model. I mean, my measurement model is given by following. Yeah. And uh, now, yeah, so th yeah, this is almost same. The, the uh, posterior distribution uh, uh, pi is given by the following. And now the uh, so now I would like to first ex uh, show what, uh, other results. So B BBM theorem. So BBM theorem means that okay. Let's consider the. <clears throat> This random variable, the theta minus c bar, n multiply the square root of n. So this theta is uh, distributed from the posterior mean. So in, uh, in the in the case of the piecewise constant in our assumption, and then this the uh, l means l means the row row of the this uh, random variable. So roughly speaking, the row row means the, this row of some blah 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 means that the uh, post. Uh, probability distribution of the random variable of this. So this probab uh, probability measurement 
uh, roughly speaking, converge to the uh, ju just the uh, normal distribution with uh, certain uh, covariant matrices. Now, this is called some uh, information matrices. And, uh, and the theta bar n is the uh, posterior mean uh, with respect to, uh, uh, sorry, theta n is just posterior mean. Yeah, so as I say that the BBS theorem means that the posterior distribution uh, converges to the, the no, uh, normal distribution. And this, so and why, why, why I introduced the BBS theorem is uh, uh, from, from the BBS theorem, the, we can derive the consistency theorem for posterior distribution. Uh, that means the, the BBS theorem is uh, BBS theorem has the more information rather than consistency theorem. So now we assume that some Q is a piece by constant, which is more restrictive assumption. And then the, we can also, in this case, we can also have some BBM theorem. The BBS theorem is a posterior distribution uh, converged, converged to the uh, no, uh, uh, no normal distribution. And the finally, I would like to uh, numeric, uh, we show that some numerical simulation of the posterior mean, posterior mean and the uh, visualization of the BBM theorem. And then uh, numerical simulation, uh, I use some MC MC algorithms. So MC MC algorithms often uh, use some method for testing algorithm, method for testing or the give sampling. So and we, in the MC MC also. We MC, MC, MC algorithm need a, a proposal distribution. This proposal distribution, we choose some normal distribution of the or Mara. Anyway, we, we consider the following four type algorithm. So the, I skip the metropolis hasting and give sampling, but the, some how to choose some the uh, proposal distribution is uh, P. Now, if, if I say the normal distribution for proposal distribution, this is just a, a normal distribution. And in this case, the, the acceptance probability is given by the following. I mean, uh, <clears throat> using the uh, likelihood function. And if, 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 if I say MARA, uh, metropolis, metropolis adjust, adjusted uh, run giving algorithm, I mean, this is not so familiar, but uh, uh, this is also the normal distribution. But the uh, uh, mean, mean little bit different. Mean uh, is uh, added to the derivative, uh, derivative of the likelihood function. So we call this is uh, MARA. Uh, and then the, I show some uh, numerical experiments for, for, for algorithm. So this is a, uh, uh, grand truth. We we can prepare two two type. The first is four four pieces, and the second one is eight pieces. The four pieces means that now the reflective index is assumed to be piecewise constant, and but uh, they are uh, they can be complex variables. So the green one green one is a uh, real variable, but and the uh, red one is a complex variable. <clears throat> And yes, eight, eight pieces also same. Anyway, this is a true this uh, true reflective index. And this is the visualization of the posterior mean. So the first algorithm is a combination of the metropolis hasting and just normal distribution. And this is a, a reconstruction by a posterior mean. And this. Uh, this graph, this graph means that M, uh, uh, error, uh, error between the posterior mean, posterior mean and the reconstructed, uh, reconstruction. So that, and uh, yes, this this line is the iteration. If the iteration is, if 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 there are many iterations, the error uh, getting goes to zero. We can observe. So this is a metropolitan hasting and uh, normal distribution. Uh, the next one is uh, metropolitan hasting and uh, MARA. And the third one is, uh, uh, next is uh, give, give sampling and uh, normal distribution. 
And the fourth one, last one is a Gibbs and the uh, Mara. So you, you see that some uh, error, error graph, the final one, I mean, uh, Gibbs and the Mara is the beta. And, and then the finally, the, I would like to visualize some of the convergence of the distribution. So finally, I would like to the, use some Gibbs sampling plus the Mara. So, so I, what, what I want to show is uh, some BBS theorem, roughly speaking, the posterior distribution uh, converged to the uh, normal distribution. I would like to uh, visualize this. So the, this blue one, blue one is uh, some no, uh, uh, normal distribution. And uh, this the histogram is uh, uh, sampling, sampling from the posterior, posterior distribution. So this first one is n is just five. That, I mean just just five measurement. But the next one, next one is n n is uh, fifteen. Uh, ne next one is uh, n is twenty five, and next one is n is thirty five. So if n is close to, if if n is uh, large, uh, the histogram becomes uh, uh, converge to the uh, blue blue uh, normal distribution we can. So this this means that we uh, we uh, verify the verify that the no uh, BBS server. Okay, I I stop here. Yeah, so thank you, thank you for listening. Uh huh. Thank you very much. Are there questions, comments, please? Uh, maybe I can comment a little. Uh, it would be maybe it would be preferable to to begin with basic notions of this approach. Uh, as to me, I have understood almost nothing <laughs> to my shame. Why? Mm -hmm because uh, the title promised, promises uh, something about inverse scattering. And uh, we expected uh, to, lis uh, to, uh, to listen about reconstruction of refractive index via scattering amplitude. As far as I understood, uh, there is some statistical approach which connects uh, the distributions of uh, the distribution of scattering as a random distribution of scattering amplitude which uh, relates with uh, uh, distribution of parameter of uh, refractive index something like that is it correct am i correct Yes, yes. So the, this is main result. So the, the idea is uh, roughly speaking that we want to reconstruct uh, n, n, n from the observation data. This y yeah, n excuse me, excuse me. A, n, n is the parameter for reconstruction, right? N, n. Yeah, but yes, n, n is. Yes, yes. and but what is n zero? Is it... N zero is a true, true one. Sorry? And 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 zero is a true true uh, true reflective index. Uh huh. So roughly and speaking, okay, uh, okay. Uh, this yes, yeah, so th this is some the uh, posterior distribution. Uh, sorry, the, so that that means that n minus n not uh, is uh, bigger than gamma n. Uh, such case is. Uh, uh, Never happen if n goes to infinity. So that that means that n is very close to n naught, very roughly speaking. If the observation data is n is n is increasing, so this n is a, scat a scattering amplitude from the n n naught and n zero, very 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 roughly speaking. Yeah. Okay. So the m m is the same. So we want to reconstruction from the observation data scattering amplitude for many many angle. So this is some. Uh, but in the version, version of the statistical, I mean Bayesian version. 
the more easy to understand is uh, this this uh, uh this other consequences. But this means that this uh, uh psi of the you know, heart, this roughly speaking, the posterior posterior uh -huh. mean mean of the uh, posterior mean. So posterior mean is uh, very close to n zero in the sense of the probability. Uh, in the probability, if if n goes to infinity, excuse so that me, means that because... excuse me, excuse me. In this relation, in this relation, where uh, where the scattering data is, where is it? In in which yes. in, in which function or distribution or what? Where is information yeah. about scattering data about uh, scattering complete scattering where? data? Scattering data is by n and x n. Ah uh ha -huh. ha. Uh -huh. So the first, the, this n, n bar is a posterior mean with respect to this data. Uh -huh. So this n, n, n i, uh, sorry, f, f bar n, uh, exactly speaking, we need to link function, but uh, roughly speaking, the posterior mean with respect to data uh, given from the uh, scattering amplitude converged to n0, n0 is too long if data goes to infinity. This is more easy, easy to understand rather than consistency, consistency, consistency theorem. So that means posterior mean can be some good estimator, estimator for true reflective index. Oh, huh. Okay, however, maybe uh, for the next time, it would be desirable, uh, first of all, to, uh, to to give some introduction in the basic ideas of the approach, because we are oh, not <laughs> we are not experts in in statistical methods. We are just uh, experts in uh, mathematical physics, in uh, algorithms of reconstruction. Algorithms on fine of of, uh, of finding coefficients, so on, so on, and uh, your approach is very intriguing. But uh, you should be more accurate in uh, preparing talks for audience, uh, keeping in mind that uh, the audience uh, needs uh, some maybe elementary introduction, okay? Okay, sorry, that, yeah, our slide is very quick, quick introduction <laughs> of the Bayesian. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. But the next time I, I will explain more kind okay. introduction of Bayesian. Okay, we but, wait, uh, anyway. we wait, we wait and hope. More questions, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe more questions, comments, please. No questions, okay. Professor Furue, thank you very much once again. Thank you. And 